Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode. Per usual, I've got some stuff to show you. You know the drill. All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, I made some weird purchases on Facebook and I got a big box in. Um, I did not, actually let me grab one more item. I did not, uh, I don't have all of it here to show you. Uh, got some weird stuff, got some weird odd scaled stuff, and uh, some 143rd again. I'm buying more 143rd for whatever reason. Uh, I got those items. I did pick out like two weird scale items to show. And I say weird scale, I just mean not 164 scale. I've got this cool thing, Tic Tac liveried um, BMW. Pretty cool. Uh, definitely a neat little piece. It's a Barago interesting it's gonna be interesting we're gonna check that out of course um and then i've got this guy which is a uh one i don't know is it 124 scale maybe does it even say it's an amt Ertl collectibles ford gt90 i don't know what a cool looking car actually i thought uh, the gt90 looked completely stupid um and then i completely 180 on that. I think it is a really cool looking kind of concept car. I don't think they ever really, did they ever really put it out? I mean, I think there was like maybe one version of it made and that was it, or maybe one vehicle of it. Um, I'm not really sure. And I'm looking for a scale on here and I, I can't. Copyright date's 1996. It appears to be made out of plastic. The body is plastic, and it's an AMT Ertl tooling, so almost like a model kit that's already put together. But we'll check that out. Um, anyway, I thought that would be interesting to look at. I saw it. It was cheap, you know, and I, I bought it. All right. Um, there's that. Um, I got a couple of other little loose cars from that that I'm just going to show. I got a GTO here, real basic. I think this was a KB Toys exclusive or something like that and then i got this racing champions dodge viper we're gonna take a peek at as well it is whatever and then um sticking with weird stuff for a second you know we got our box from jay of course uh he sent me a jolly rancher hauler <laughs> goofy thing uh, funny thing is I actually had this at one point because I got, uh, when I had a collection for my friend Chuck a long time ago, long story, long time ago, um, and I was selling a collection for him, um, that he, he passed away and I was selling a collection for his, his, uh, wife. Um, anyway, uh, he had a bunch of these haulers and I ended up, I think I sold them all. But uh, we got the Jolly Rancher one. I'll open it. We'll take a look at it. It's fun. Um, he sent me an oddball Johnny Lightning or an older one. This is a custom Tornado. Tornado. And uh, this is a Johnny Lightning commemorative limited edition. Older Johnny Lightning tooling style. So we'll check that out. And then he also sent me a team transport of the 1997 Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR and the Fleet Street. This is actually a pretty cool one. I could have, I think I could have picked this up at the pegs. I think I saw it. Um, the only one I'm missing now from this set is the 33 Willys, that one on the back. So I haven't grabbed that one yet, and then I will be up to date, I guess, on this particular set of team transport. I'm actually not sure what I'm all missing uh, from that entire collection. I'd have to really peek at it. I mean, I know I'm missing the Supreme one, but that's fine. And then, uh, probably missing some of the Legends Tour ones too, but whatever. All right. You guys know my complaints about team transport. All right. Next is some stuff that I got from SC Diecast. Uh, SC Diecast does, uh, carry Mattel products. Uh, they also do um, oddball import stuff. They do green light. They do some. Uh, they do some round two stuff. Some Johnny Lightning. Some uh, Auto World, of course. But what I picked out to show you today from the stuff I grabbed from a little while ago is some Mattel items. I've got two vehicles from the latest Fast and Furious Premium set. These two guys right here. I grabbed only these two from the set, to be honest, because I think the other cars are all repeats, and I thought these were not. These were the two that were not repeats. So you got the Toyota uh, Sprinter Treno and the uh, Ford RS200. And the Ford RS200 looks really cool and it's just plain white. So I picked those two up, 
And then from the pop culture set, I grabbed three items from that. I think these are all from the same wave. But we got the Barbie Cool Combi. Had to grab that one. Uh, we've got the Ford Escort RS 1800 Mark II, Forza Horizon 5. Grabbed that guy. And then we've got the Roadkill uh, Rotson 71 Dotson 240Z Rotson. I never uh, grabbed the original one of these when you could get it from like Motor Trend Magazine or whatever it was, or you had to subscribe to Motor Trend and then you got the, the vehicle. I never grabbed that one. And so I'm kind of glad that they put it out in a pop culture set. And honestly, I don't know how they how it differs from the one that they sent with that subscription. Um, but I imagine it's pretty close. So I got that. That's cool. Um, I picked up a couple of things in store. I grabbed the last two neon speeders that I needed. So we got the Skyline. And then we also got the Integra. Pretty cool. I grabbed two cars from the Women of Fast, Fast and Furious set which now I'm missing probably the, maybe the two most desirable. I'm missing the Mazda RX-8 and I'm missing the Porsche 718. The Porsche 718 is probably the one I really want, uh, but I did pick up these two, the custom Corvette Stingray Coupe and uh, the Honda S2000. So I grabbed those two. I already had the GT40. Or actually, I have it and I don't think I opened it yet. Maybe I'll grab that. Actually, let's do that. I see it right over here, and we, we might as well just open up that one, too. Why not? All right, so we got those. Um, and then I found some of the new Matchbox moving parts, the, the latest wave of that, the new 2024 ones. Two new toolings. We've got the 2023 Audi RS6 Avant. I wish they would put the pictures of all the whole wave on the back, but they don't. Um, so I got that guy. Um, I got the uh, Chevy Tahoe in red and the 1973 BMW CSL 3.0. Pretty cool. That's a new tooling here. Uh, so pick those up. Uh, pretty neat. I looked through the whole thing. They didn't, I, I didn't see the Pagani in there. And I know that one's the, the Super Chase or whatever. Uh, didn't see that one, so I don't have that. I'd like to get that. That would be pretty cool. But uh, didn't find that one. Got those three. Picked those three out of whatever was left over there. Because someone obviously had got to them before me. All right. And then I got from my buddy Dicastrum. I didn't have this set. All I had from this Big Country Collectibles uh, truck auto world set was the square body and the the ultra red of the square body which was what was it a texaco chevy cheyenne stepside so i got the ultra red and i got the regular of that and i showed it in a previous video but now i have the rest of the six car set i've got the uh you know the f-150 pbr not paps blue ribbon unfortunately professional bull riding um it'd be cool to get a pbr livery truck uh then we got the mossy oak uh, Chevy Silverado. This one's probably the coolest one out of the set. Uh, just that mossy oak livery. It's kind of cheeseball, but I've seen it um, in real life. And then uh, the four sixes ranch. Because, uh, you know, three sixes weren't enough. And we got four. I had, I'm not familiar with this, you know. I'm not in any way uh, a farm boy or a country boy or anything like that, you know. Not necessarily big city boy either, but, you know, I'm not in tune with that. Uh, Polaris Razor. So this is kind of an oddball set. They sold it at AutoWorldStore.com, and then I think some other hobby dealers carried it as well. Uh, Hewitt Farms, Chevy Suburban. Um, so they were sold as sets, and I think, I don't know if they were sold as individual cars originally, but you can get them as individuals uh, now, trucks. So... So we got those. So I got, I'm complete on that set. I would need the ultra reds for that set yet, except for the, the square body. Um, probably going to be somewhat hard to get. I don't, I don't know because they're not, 
I'm sure these are limited and they don't say how limited. So I have no idea how many of these have been produced. No clue, but uh, we got that. So that is our pile of items to look at today. Uh, let's go ahead and flip the camera around. I got to figure out how I'm going to set up here. Do something different again today, probably. Don't know what. Stay tuned and find out. All right. Thank you. All right, guys, another uh, weekly episode, another new camera uh, angle. We're going to try this one out today. Hopefully, it works out pretty good. Um, maybe we can settle on one uh, that's going to be permanent at some point in time. Or it should just keep moving it around. It's kind of fun. All right, we're going to start with uh, this guy right here. This is a Racing Champions. It's actually a Racing Champions casting. It is a, a Dodge Viper, as you can tell. Uh, there you go in the bottom there. Racing Champions made in China. Uh, copyright date of the tooling is like 2001, it appears. And uh, there you have it. It's a pretty nice little tooling. I've got a couple of different uh, versions of this. I think I have it in like black. I might have it in yellow. Uh, I, then I picked this one up in red cheap. For, uh, loose uh, from a Facebook seller. And it's not bad. I mean, the paint quality looks pretty good. Uh... You know, the tires are plastic. The uh, the headlights are just, you know, a silver paint. So it's not like super, super detailed or anything like that, but it's not, not bad either. So kind of digging that. All right, we'll set that off to the side here. Kind of do that thing as we go. Uh, here you go. Larger scale. We've got a Barago uh, BMW uh, M3. So this is kind of a weird little thing. It is a uh, plastic base, plastic wheels. It's got a Tic Tac livery, which is pretty sweet. It's got uh, kind of an inserted detail for the headlights. I think those are probably going to be a piece of the windshield, if I had to guess, uh, which I do have to guess because I'm not taking it apart. Uh, um, although... It looks like the base kind of just like snaps in. There is no, um, there's nothing that uh, like rivets or screws or anything holding it together. So it's kind of like snapped together is almost what it looks like. Made in Italy, actually. So that's kind of cool. I don't know. When this came out, I imagine it's somewhat older. The uh, graphics on it appear to be actually stickers, not decals, not printed, uh, actual stickers. So that's kind of interesting as well, but uh, kind of a neat older uh, little piece. I think it's probably about, uh, probably about 143rd-ish scale. Somewhere in that range, it might be a little smaller actually. So I'm not really sure. And they, they say 143rd on the base, but it feels like it's like slightly smaller than 143rd. All right, we'll set that guy back there. And then uh, the uh, GTO, here's this guy. Plastic tires, metal body, metal base. This is a GTO. It is uh, Johnny Lightning, and I believe it was in some KB Toys 5-pack or something like that. Is it's uh, original? Obviously, I didn't get it in the packaging. I got it like this. All I know is I didn't have this one before, so I added it to my collection. I collect this casting. Uh, I've got quite a few of them, but there are still some that I'm missing, and this was one of them. So I was glad to check that off the list and add it uh, to the collection. So uh, nice paint job on this one. Nice color green, black interior, plastic tires, you know. Some people don't like the plastic tires. I don't really mind the hard plastic racing wheels, I think is uh, what Johnny Lightning calls them. But uh, that's that. All right. Um, what should we look at next? I think let's get this guy. Let's get the cat out of the box here. This is uh, a Ford GT90. And uh, it's big. I think... It's probably about 124 scale. AMT Ertle. Um, I, I don't know. The more I look at this, 
this design of this vehicle, I think it's really cool. It would be it would be neat to get it in a straight up 164 scale uh, release from from a premium manufacturer. I know that Hot Wheels released one back in the day, and it's not a terrible tooling. It really isn't, but uh, it would be cool to get a detailed model. I know there's not going to be much you can really do with it, so I understand why uh, maybe investing in this tooling isn't the best idea for a, a company to do. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, if anyone I could see maybe doing it, it would be either Mini GT or Para 64. I could see Para 64. Para 64 does weird stuff, like kind of goes off the beaten path and and does some interesting things. So I could see them maybe doing it, but because, you know, they did the Suzetta. So, you know, maybe they would do this car. I don't know. Oh, I hate these. Dang it. I was actually hoping I was getting the screwdriver ready. I, th I was hoping this thing was screwed down to the base because I honestly didn't. I wanted to be able to take it in and out of the package and now this is going to become slightly irritating because I'm not going to be able to easily put it back in because of these twist tie things. I've never done it anyway. I've never tried to put a car back in the package with the twist ties. So I guess I'm going to try to do it this time. I guess what we could do, and I know that kind of stinks, but what we can do is I'll pull it out. We'll take a look at it. I'm not going to remove, sadly, I'm not going to remove the, the things from the bottom here because I think getting these wrapped around the tires again are going to be a challenge. So in order for me to get this back in the package, I don't really have a place to display it like out of the package loose yet. So I'd like to put it back in um, and that's what I'm going to do. So it is all plastic, all plastic. The body is plastic. The base is plastic. The wheels are wheels are rubber. Um, they're harder rubber. This thing definitely would roll if I didn't have those, you know, things impeding it from rolling on the bottom, it would definitely roll. Here we can kind of do this and get an idea, but yeah, it would definitely roll. Um, detail wise, it's pretty neat. You know, I don't know. Maybe I will just take these off. You know, maybe I'll find a, find a home for this to sit sort of on display. I wanted to keep it in the box just because then I don't have to worry about it getting dusty and all that, but I hate these things. I hate these twist ties. These are the worst. Uh, the worst, besides like rubber bands, these are the worst. I could probably figure out to get it back in the package, but, you know, whatever. But yeah, so this thing rolls. Uh, I actually don't mind that it's plastic. Uh, one reason why I don't mind it being plastic is that you really don't have to worry about like paint rash or anything like that, which you can get with older die casts. So this thing is old, but it's, I don't think it's ever going to, you know, it's not going to have paint issues obviously because it's not, it's not painted. <laughs> it's, it's white plastic. Uh, you do have an inserted detail for the taillights. I am liking the lighting today on this thing. I think it looks pretty nice. You can see the grid in my soft box, but yeah, kind of creating a good look. Uh, so yeah, I think this is pretty neat. I should probably at least leave it out of the box, take some cool pictures of it or something like that. I haven't really shot larger scale vehicles too much, but this would be a cool one to do. And I just like the detail on it. I think it looks, I think it looks good. It's obviously kind of basic because it's all plastic. Uh, but you do have, uh, some detail in here for the engine. Um, I don't know. Overall, I think this thing is pretty nifty. So it's a cool little display piece and maybe I'll display it at my desk. We'll see. Uh, so uh, that's pretty neat. I like it. I think it's cool. I, I don't, like I said, I don't normally get a lot of other scales, but I do dabble in it every once in a while and they're, they're pretty fun to look at. Uh, the main reason why I got them was to take like some pictures of them or something like that, which I really haven't got to, uh, but you know, whatever. All right. So uh, let's get into the stuff from Jay quickly here. We've got this Johnny Lightning com commemorative limited edition custom tornado. Uh, race the winner. 
Custom Tornado Series 6. It is numbered, I guess, 5322. I don't know of how many. Uh, these came out... 1995 is the copyright date. Let's go ahead and get it open. And... There's the uh, little coin thing. Get the packaging out of the way. And then we got the car itself. It's a nice color red. Does it have an opening hood? It seems like it should. Um, yep, there it is. Cast in uh, engine detail, not a ton, but it's there. And these are really meant for kind of like downhill racing to kind of compete with Hot Wheels, these style of castings. Copyright date 1995, Plain Mantis, but I think this is a reissue of an old, an older tooling from Johnny Lightning. Kind of Redline era looking, you know, the older toolings. So, kind of neat. Ooh, this thing might roll right off the back. Be careful there. All right. So we got that oddball thing, and then we got this oddball thing, this Jolly Rancher truck. Kind of a goofy deal. Uh, it's Jolly Rancher. Here's, here's a showing of some other stuff that was available. McDonald's, Milk Duds, Tropicana. What is that one? Telephone Maintenance and Recycle America. Uh, I don't think I've ever actually opened one of these up. They are actually, though, kind of cool for customs. If you can find these cheap, I had a buddy of mine, Jeremy, who made some customs out of these. What he did basically was just rip the box off, and then what you got is sort of a flatbed kind of truck thing going on. And, you know, they're cheap enough you can paint them and whatever and do what you want with them. But anyway, this is your Johnny Rancher hauler predating the uh, team transport line. So it's all metal. Uh, well, actually, it's not all metal. The body's all metal. The base is plastic. The uh, box is plastic. It does have quite a bit of weight to it. And it's kind of cool. Not bad. All right. Well, we'll set it right there because we're going to go ahead and get into a team transport vehicle. And take a look at the Fleet Street with the 1997 Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR. And let's go ahead and open up that guy. Team Transport, thanks to my buddy Jay for sending this to me. He's been such a pal. I talk to him like almost daily. Um, he uh, just, I don't know, he likes providing stuff for the channel and I can never say no. So the car is really the highlight of this, getting a nice just clean silver version of this car um i don't know did they ever put it out with a big wing on it for like their like civilian usage one or non-race car one i don't know is he even supposed to have a big wing or just the back wing right here either way this is a cool hot wheel i uh i dig it quite a bit it's a it's one of the coolest cars ever made in real life uh in my opinion it's a newer casting 2020 copyright date and um, I think it's a very cool car. So really cool to get that. Of course, this is a Hot Wheels Premium. So you've got metal body, metal base, rubber tires, the like. And we'll set that there. Then we got this guy here. This is the uh, the hauler. This is the flatbed one that actually comes down like that. It's got a moving bit. And, and it comes completely off if you're not careful. But this is metal base, metal body, rubber tires. So definitely a step up from the old Jolly Rancher back there. And I do like the flatbed versions of these haulers. I like them because the car is visible. I do not like when they do box trucks because it's cool that you get the big graphics, I guess. But the thing that sucks about it is that you can't see the car, so you can't really like display them together uh, like that, like you would there. I'm going to set the Jolly Rancher one aside. We'll set that guy right there. So there's that guy. All right. Uh, should we... We should. Uh, let's go to Matchbox for a minute and take a look at these moving parts models. 
So this is that new moving parts packaging, kind of an interesting thing. It's made out of um, uh, recycled stuff. The cars are recycled metal. I don't know if the plastic's recycled plastic. It might be. The packaging is, I think, made out of all recycled cardboard. Well, here you go. A minimum of 51% ISCC certified plastic mass balance approach is what we're looking at. And then it's got this weird like egg carton type of thing going on. And then we see this is new for 2024. Very cool that they put that there to let us know uh, that this is a brand new casting. So here's the package. Here's the little egg carton. And then you got to kind of, you can push the car out usually without, yeah, without destroying the packaging. So you could technically, if you wanted to, you could sort of rebox these. The only thing uh, that you can't do is kind of reseal this because you have to rip this open to get it apart. I mean, you could carefully do it and then re-glue them back in if you really wanted to keep it like that. What would be kind of cool, I don't know if it'd be possible, if maybe they perforated the cardboard thing so you could actually like rip this clean off and then made that openable so you can actually just store the car back the way you got it. I don't know, would that be fun? It might be. Uh, you could put this back in here if you wanted to too. I mean, I don't really see that you need to, but go ahead and get rid of that. All right, here's your Audi. New tooling, brand new. We got uh, details. Of course, uh, Matchbox is the best in the business at putting graphics on headlights. And these look pretty good. And taillights as well. Let's check that out. Pretty good. And then the moving part on this model is a tailgate that opens. And it doesn't open super well, but it does open. And there you go. Uh, plastic base, because it's a basic moving parts model. And decent looking wheels and tires. I think overall, it's a pretty good looking casting, in my opinion. You guys let me know what you think. I'm just gonna set it right back there. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the Tahoe. Uh, so this is not a new casting. We've already seen it. We're gonna pull it out of this interesting packaging. I wonder how much this packaging costs to produce versus that weird one that they had with the weird bubble and plastic and all that. I like this packaging. Um, as long as it doesn't affect the car. And I haven't had any issues with it. I've had one of my buddies, Brian, said he had some, like some of them had scuff marks and stuff on them. But I, don't, I haven't seen that with any of mine yet that I've picked up. I'll probably say that, and then probably this next one we're going to open will have issues because that's the way it goes. But let's see. Uh, lots of detail underneath there. That's pretty nifty. Uh, the hood doesn't really open super well and the gap there is a little obnoxious so that's part of the reason why i don't like opening parts models sometimes is if you can't pull it off with the hood like laying flat and stuff and not leaving some massive gap as a collectible i don't think it's that cool um of course for play value you know it's going to be fun for for people that buy it for that right so but as a replica uh, not as cool, but I still like these. I like these Matchbox moving parts models. I, I mean, obviously I do. I get a lot of them. Uh, here is another new one for 2024, the 73 BMW CSL 3.0. So this one's got a opening hood as illustrated there. And again, we got our packaging. And I actually like, I think I like the packaging. I think I dig it. Here it is, orange, beautiful color for this car. I actually have a buddy that has, I think one of these or something very close to it. It may not be like a CSL or whatever. I think it is and it's orange. He's got an orange one. Uh, so the hood should pop up and then open outward. There it goes. Ooh, it kind of snaps. No, no, it doesn't. I thought it snapped into place. It really doesn't. But here's a look at the uh, detail in the engine. Look at that. That's pretty nice. 
It's kind of that dot matrixy printing look, but it doesn't really matter when you're using it for detail for an engine like inside of here, because you're not gonna get real close to that to really see the dot matrix effect. Um, any issues with it? I don't see any. Uh, not the greatest graphics back here uh, for representing the tail lights. Decent ones up front. So this is a cool little casting. Uh, they'll probably put it out. They might end up putting it on the collector line, I would guess, with like rubber tires and stuff. I'd hope to see it there. Uh, maybe that Audi we'll see as well. I don't know. But uh, there is those guys for you. We're going to go ahead and move on to Hot Wheels now. And we've got a few things to get to. Let's go premium first. We're going to do... We got a Ford Escort RS 1800 Mark II, Forza Horizon 5. Pop that open. Again, I wish they would put a picture of the full set or wave on the back of the card. I like when they do that because then you know what you're missing when you're looking at them. You don't need to look it up online. At the same time, I get it. You can look it up online. So, yeah, you can look it up yourself if you want to, but I still think they should do that. Um, Really dot matrixy looking in the side graphics. The stuff I complain about all the time, and I will never stop <laughs> until it's rectified, which it probably won't be for a very long time, if ever. Um, yeah, not too bad. It It's a decent looking car. The front end looks good. The graphics for the headlights and stuff look pretty good. All in all, not a bad little model. Put it right there. Uh, and the next one had to get this guy. Why not? It's a cool comic. I still kind of collect this casting. This is one of those castings I really like when I first started like getting really into Hot Wheels, which was tail end of 2014 was the cool combi. I just love this thing. And, uh, I, I don't really care for it as much as I used to, but I still think it's, it's cool. And I mean, I had to get it with the Barbie pink blue going on so this will be a desirable one in the future for sure i don't know how mass produced these are obviously but this is going to be one that uh any of the cool combis always kind of end up going for a premium it's a very desirable casting i would argue and of course with barbie on it it's going to be so it's a cross mattel collectible and i think uh this one in the future probably will be you know, still going for it. The only thing that's kind of weird about it, they put a yellow windshield in a red interior. And I don't know why they would have done that. I would think it would be better if they would have kept that hot pink for the interior and maybe just made it a clear. It's kind of goofy uh, that they did that. I don't know why they did that. But, uh, you know, you'd think you'd keep it the same. Or maybe like that light blue color for the interior might have been good with just a clear window. Uh, but we got a yellow tinted window and a, we got a mustard tinted window and a ketchup colored interior. Kind of goofy. I don't know what's up with that. All right. Then the Rotson. Uh, this is not new to any of you probably because this the Motor Trend version of this has been out for years. But it's new to me because I've actually... Never had one of these open before. And uh, I'm assuming this looks pretty darn similar to the one that was available for that uh, subscription service. And there it is. 240Z modified with that uh, whatever's going on up front. I've never, I don't think I ever watched the episode that this car was made in or featured in. But it's a rotted out 240Z that they put uh, some engine in and turb skied it and whatever. I don't know if it's like a, what did they put in there? Did they LS swap it? Was it a small block Chevy? I don't know what the heck it is. Somebody will answer in the comments below. Actually, you know, it might even say, maybe, maybe, maybe. The original one had like a cutout hood. It wasn't like completely missing. Uh, the one in the show. No, they don't have any real details about it, but whatever. Uh, someone, will, someone will comment that knows it. 
still wild looking 240z i collect the regular casting i might as well collect this or I might as well grab this one right probably get the motor trend one at some point two down the line why not all right fast and furious we're gonna furiously open this up toyota ae86 sprinter trueno uh there's the rest of the set see i like when they do that let's see the rest of the uh, set this is from tokyo drift this trueno in silver I know I mention it every time. I've still never seen a Fast and Furious movie. Never have. Ain't saying I never will. I just never have. But uh, here you go. Sprinter Trino. With the headlights up. Graphics look pretty decent. Uh, we've got a little metal shaving. Came off. And some dot matrixy looking stuff there on the back overall kind of a cool casting it looks good the stance on it is good it's like nice and low and um i think they did a good job with this tooling in general i i do like it i think it's kind of cool so it looks good the wheel choice is good gray on gray or silver on gray or whatever it looks good i think it looks good uh it's a cool Cool little casting. Glad to add it to the collection. We'll set her back there. All right. This guy looks pretty awesome, too. This is the Ford RS200. This is from Fast and Furious. So is that from the OG Fast and Furious? I don't know. I do like it, though, because it's just a clean, plain old white Ford. Kind of reminded me of this clean, plain old Ford, right? Pretty neat. So we just got the blue oval in the front, uh, some other details for headlights and the fog light thingies and some detail in the back. Again, uh, the printing is not super high resolution, but whatever, it is what it is. I'm, I'm still gonna complain about it every single time. I just am. Uh, the little black paint on the top, I could have just left that out because it looks a little goofy. If you're looking at the details up close, it's supposed to like, show that that's an opening where air can flow through but yeah, it just looks like a problem with the paint really the way it's done uh overall i dig it though i think it's cool all right pretty neat um sticking with fast and furious for a moment let's talk about the ladies of fast and furious the women of fast and uh, who doesn't like a fast woman all right so for gt40 here is your five car set in the back again like when they do that i'm missing the cayman in the rx8 and i do want them i think uh, i think i would get them so if i come across them i'm going to grab those i think the cayman's probably the most desirable one uh this gt40 i do collect actually this casting i've got quite a few different variations of them most of them are pretty ugly because they're from the era of Hot Wheels, that just is, the graphics are pretty dated and ugly and gross. But this looks pretty nice. I'm digging that. Pretty cool. Yeah. Nifty. What do you guys think? Looks good. Looks bad. Looks not bad. Um, pretty, pretty decent looking. It's a little exaggerated in the feature department. Uh, with the way this GT40 looks, but, you know, it's an older tooling, uh, what, there's probably a date on the bottom here, yeah, uh, 1999, so that tells you how old the tooling is, pretty old, this is a newer tooling, custom Corvette Stingray Coupe, women of fast, and in red, that looks pretty good too, Look at that guy. Yeah, pretty nifty. So this one, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. The base on this is metal. The base on this is metal. Cool. As it is in the, is it, I don't know, this isn't technically silver premium, silver line of die cast or whatever they're calling it for the Mattel stuff. Uh, that is like the semi-premium stuff with some metal bases and whatever mixed in. This has plastic tires, of course, but it has a metal base. 
And uh, that's kind of a surprise to me. I thought this would be plastic. Um, so it's got a lot of weight to it. Kind of a semi-premium model. These are like $3.50 a piece at, uh, at Walmart. So they are a semi-premium price. Uh, then we have the S2000. This one's plastic based. I can already tell by looking at it through the thing here and feeling the weight of it. So this one could have been metal because this casting does was tooled with a metal base. Well, actually, so was the GT40, and it's not here. But here's your pink S2000. Pretty decent. And this one's been out, you know, a few times, I think. So... Nothing too spectacular to look at there. Um, yeah. And then we got our Neon Speeder. So I finished the uh, Neon Speeder set. We got the Acura Integra. Custom Acura Integra. Custom 01 Acura Integra. GSR. Kind of like a almost tiger stripe looking thing. Kind of a cool looker, looking uh, Integra. Matte black. These are all, um, these cost the same actually as those at Walmart. It's kind of an interesting, weird line, but I don't know. It's kind of grown on me a little bit. And then I like uh, the, this guy here in pink, Nissan Skyline 2000 GTR. We've got a lot of pink here in this episode. We've got the Barbie car, the S2000. We've got this 2000 GTR crazy color combo here all neon blue green pink green wheels or rims full like deco and yeah i don't know so some of the semi-premium stuff or silver line that whatever we're calling it um the sets are pretty cool i will call these still semi-premium even though they're not like that semi-premium in quotes line that has come out with the the porsche set the uh the wagons um the vintage racing set that just came out uh, those have like chase models in them i guess but uh these do not but they cost about the same price so i'm still gonna call them semi-premium they are like full deco or you know full tampo uh surfaces all over they're gonna have headlight detail this one kind of skimps on it because there's not really much to show, but it does have a metal base. Some of them have metal bases, um, so it's kind of not one step above mainline are these cars. So this one looks kind of cool. All right. Um, we're going to follow that up with the remainder of the video, which is going to be looking at these guys. So real quick, we're going to go through these Auto World. This is Hewitt Farms. The Suburban, 65 Chevy Suburban, open that up. I'm not going to spend much time on these. Um, even though I love Auto World, this really isn't my style of collectible. Um, as mentioned in the first kind of half of the video. Uh, but these do look pretty nice. I'm not really usually into it. Uh, stuff with like sponsored graphics, unless it's a race car on the side, but these look pretty decent. So here's this nice looking Suburban. I mean, good quality auto world car. Very nice. It's just not really, you know, my like cup of tea, which is why I delayed in getting these. I didn't really, you know, go after them. And then my buddy Di Castrum got them for me. So I didn't even have to really buy them, which is cool to me. Um, and I thank him for that PBR. Ford F-150. Plus, the other thing is, like, they're kind of my least favorite toolings from Auto World. I'm not really into the modern trucks so much, and that's the majority of this set. So, there's kind of two things counting against it as far as I'm concerned. I still would like to collect all the Ultra Reds. Why not? Because I am an Ultra Red collector. Um, you know, these truck pick castings are neat. They're heavy. You know, they're well-built. They're cool. The only, you know, gripe I'm going to have, and I mentioned it several times, is that they put more detail into the headlights on these things. Um, but, you know, just not not really my cup of tea. I mean, they're really heavy die cast. They're neat. The next one is this Polaris Razor, Polaris uh, Chevy Silverado Custom Trail Boss. And here's the boss of the trail, Polaris Razor. Looks uh, pretty good. Pretty cool graphics on the side, I guess. And again, really not my thing, but I'm sure there's some people out there that really enjoy them. 
you know, it's for a different segment of collectors than I really am from, and that's cool. Um, any reason I can get anybody into Auto World that hasn't been before, I think it's great because I love Auto World. All right. Ram Tradesman, Four Sixes Ranch. I know nothing of the Four Sixes Ranch. But there's your uh, Ram. This one's got a trailer hitch on the back. I don't think I've seen this model with a trailer hitch on the back before. So that's interesting. The tailgate pops down. The hood, of course, is going to open. And have some detail underneath there. Um, it's a pretty good looking truck. It is. Actually, out of the modern, like Silverado, uh, F-150, Ram. Honestly, I think the Ram looks the best. In my opinion. The newer Ram uh, trucks. I don't, I would never buy any of them, to be honest. I wouldn't want to even really drive them. Um... I mean, they're nice and all that. I would say maybe the high country. This like, like these are these are pretty nice looking. I had my uh, brother in law uh, had a high country. I don't know if he still does or not, but I mean, it was a nice truck. It's like a luxury truck. But here's, here is a high country in mossy oak, and they're freaking expensive too. To know this is probably the coolest one in the set to me. Just this mossy oak livery. I like that. It's kind of like a you know, kind of a cool tan color, and then you got that, like, camo. It's cheesy. I will say that. Like, I, if I'm spending, like, however much these are, they're probably, I don't even know, I, I hate to even say it, but, like, 70 grand, 80 grand, something like that, whatever these trucks are these days, they're expensive. And then uh, to slap, like, camo on the side of it, it would not be something that I would do. But, you know, to each their own. And, uh, yeah, cause I, I know that you're, you're spending that kind of money on this kind of truck. I'm guessing you're not on a high country. You're not going to, uh, you know, drive this into the woods as your hunting vehicle or anything like that. Just a guess. You're probably not doing that. Um, if you are, I mean, more power to you. All right. So that's going to be it for this episode. Let me know what you guys thought of the setup here. I, th I think I liked it. This is the best out of the three in the last three weeks for sure. Um, maybe we'll continue this. It was a pretty easy uh, setup to do. I think I'm going to take a picture of how I got it set up so I don't forget. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching another weekly episode. I got tons of stuff to show you in the weeks ahead. Uh, and it just always, you know, continues to pile. So never going to be a shortage. At least I don't think I say that maybe there will be sometime. I don't know. Whatever. All right. Bye. See you later.